Good afternoon. How's everybody today? Uh, today we are going to be introducing uh, method physiognomy to the audience. So uh, for those of you that are not familiar with method physiognomy, it's actually from Geneva, Switzerland. So this presentation will be sponsored by Dermen Co. And uh, just to refresh your memories, Dermen Co, an established company in Montreal, Canada, being around for well over 25 years. We are the manufacturers and providers of other skincare brands such as Nelly DeVust, Druid BioLove, the Druid brand, for those of you that are interested in organic formulations, the Alaska brand for uh, miscellaneous waxes, as well as our hand sanitizers and any sort of uh, chemicals necessary for uh, affecting uh, viruses as well as bacterium. And Europe Lab, our division that will help to develop uh, your private label uh, needs if you wish to have. The company itself established uh, over 40 years ago, we're talking about today is Method Physiogermy, developed in Geneva, Switzerland, founded by Dr. Collado. So the formulations that I'm gonna be talking about today are exclusive to this Swiss lab. They are not uh, part of Nelly DeVus, they are not part of Druid BioLove or the private label division. What uh, the lab is famous for is really a specific technology that I'm gonna be discussing uh, and the uh, effect of these uh, molecules and how they actually penetrate into the skin. So the lab itself uh, is uh, revolutionary in terms of how it actually uh, treats the skin. And when we actually break down the actual name of the company, Method Physiodermy, it's the method of understanding and treating the physiology of the skin. So it's a literal translation of the product line. Uh, so uh, it is important to just keep in mind that anybody working with Method Physiodermy has an opportunity to actually delve into the line with regards to the concept of what it's all about. So we talk about body types, which are called morphological tendencies. We talk about the technology of the actives and how they get into the skin. This is called MIMA. And we have exclusive techniques that are used manually. So a method called morphology, sorry, called um, lymphatic drainage, and another one called physiotonifying, which I'll delve into for a brief moment in this conversation. So when we talk about morphology, it's actually the study of the body type or of the physical body. And we talk about morphology by breaking down the word itself. Morpho, the Greek uh, word morphos, meaning body, and ology, the Latin word meaning to study. So it's the study of the body developed by Hippocrates over uh, 2000 years ago. And we talk about the morphology with regards to the complexity of all human beings, but we focus on, for aesthetic reasons, we focus on the physiological components more so than anything else. So here in this chart, you see that how there are shapes and there's also colors within the um, images. So when we talk about each body type, we're going to further redefine them with a, a set of characteristics. So as an example, disregard the body type number four, the body types are not in any specific order, but this one here, the lymphatic morphology, when we look at this individual, we also call them the white circle. If you refer to a technical book that we have available, which is called Anti-Aging the Cure, written by Menon Pilon, this is a great guide for you to be able to uh, learn and further develop your skills with regards to this particular concept. And it's very helpful for individuals that are going into wellness or want to look at alternative paths to be able to recognize the uniqueness of their specific uh, client base or themselves. So when we look at the body type, we look at the morphological characteristics, which would be the shape of the body defined by muscle and bone structure. Never are we actually judging any fat content on the individual since this can come and go over the years, depending on the person's ability to look after themselves. But we know that with the lymphatic morphology, what we are talking about is somebody that generally has rounder shapes within their body. So we could look at any part of the bodies. You can see in this 
these pectorals here that have the faces round, even the middle part of the body is rounder, and they tend to have thicker ankles and wrists because of their uh, physiological characteristics. But generally, we're looking at somebody where the lymphatic system is actually uh, more dominant uh, in terms of the components that are active. So when we look at a flow chart as an example, and we talk about lymphatic circulations, to the right of the chart, you'll see that how the lymphatic system and the immune defense are actually kind of working together. And if the system is out of balance because the lymphatic circulation is helping to assist the other two circulatory pathways, which would be the venous circulation as well as the arterial flow, if the system itself is not functioning well, then this person may be inclined to infections. So they become weaker or sicker as they age because if the lymphatic system is compromised, this is the side effect of having it. When you look to the left-hand side of the chart, you're gonna see that how the overall tone of the skin or color of the skin would be a white or opalescent color. Obviously, if the person is a darker skin tone, you wouldn't see that, but you could test their body by uh, feeling the, uh, the fluids that may be built up underneath the skin. So we're, we're talking about water accumulation or fluid accumulation, which can be the abundance of not only the lymphocytes, but also of any toxins that might actually be floating within the body. And since the kidney itself is uh, the organ that would help to process all of these fluids, if the system is uh, abundant with excess, then you're gonna have kidneys that may potentially overwork and the adrenal glands, which are on top of the kidneys may be stressed and, there could, and therefore you can have issues with hormonal imbalances. The individual generally prefers or likes things that are higher in nutritional value and they tend to go more towards carbohydrates and frequently more refined carbohydrates. So when they're having too much sugar in the diet, uh, or too many refined foods in their diet, they tend to be more stressed because it does uh, create an issue with regards to their metabolic system being overwhelmed and overworked. So generally their system itself, if they're not looking after their bodies really well, they're prone to fluid retention. And this of course can make them uh, gain weight, specifically water weight. When we talk about this, the second body type, which we call the sanguinous body type, the second one for today here, it says body type number one. These are in, are in an order where we talk about how circulatory systems are actually being stressed. So the prior one being the lymphatic circulation. This one here is the sanguinous body type, but we are talking about blood flow uh, directly affected by heart function, but also the circulatory system generally providing oxyhemoglobin or nutritious uh, blood to the cells. So in this particular case here, the physiology itself is one that is strong, more robust. So we look at this body type and we see they generally gain muscle very quickly. If you feel uh, the body itself, it's firmer to the touch, especially when they're in their earlier years. And as they age, of course, as with everybody, they can lose tone, but generally they have a, a very robust, robust shape, strong uh, shoulders um, and a thicker waist because the abdominal muscles themselves are more short and compact. So the physiology of the body being an oval shape as you would look at uh, an egg as an example, it's thicker in the middle and slimmer on the side. So if you look at their wrists and ankles compared to the lymphatic morphology, these are more slender and narrower. So uh, they are not the same as the lymphatic with regards to the movement of the lymph. This is more dominant with arterial flow. And since the blood is very active, the face itself can display uh, tendencies to rosacea or flushing because you have an active nature with how blood is moving through the body. They are by nature uh, tend to be easily stimulated or excited. And as a result of it, they can have a rapid increase of blood flow to any specific area, but more so the face if you're looking at them aesthetically. 
So when we look at their flow chart, we know that blood is the most active component or the arterial flow. So the rapid circulation of the blood can have a consequence. So if we look to the right-hand side of the chart, we can see the consequence can be arterial hypertension. So sometimes populations happening, heart populations. And then of course, we're looking at how the capillaries and the uh, arteries themselves can be vasodilated. So we can have issues with blood flow going to an area, but we also have issues with the venous circulation uh, be, being problematic. So if we look at their lower limbs, varicose veins or and spider veins can be problematic and, and fluid retention, especially at the end of the day, uh, can be occurring primarily because if the system is not activated, meaning the muscular system is not activated, then you're gonna have retention simply because of stagnation due to gravity. And also when we look at the bowels, we have uh, hemorrhoids or potential issues in that area because again, it is a circulatory issue that may be occurring. So the undertone of the skin is a red. This is why we call it a red oval. And if you touch the face itself, you'll find that it's quite warm or hot to the touch, primarily because of the oxyhemoglobin. They generally have a fast metabolism when we talk about everything and everything being processed in the system. But of course, if they're having things that are overstimulating to the system, they can, this can create a weakness internally. So intestinal fatigue, uh, acid reflux, all of these conditions may actually be problematic and affecting the overall balance to the system. If they are in a healthy state, generally because their lung capacity is quite well developed, uh, they generally as they age become weaker if they're not looking after the structure such as uh, a well-balanced lifestyle with regards to stimulants, their system can become more fatigued. So the hearts and the lungs can be problematic as uh, they age. When we look at the bilious morphology, sometimes these individuals uh, are looking at uh, or people are looking at them and judging them by their physiology. This is the ideal body type in North America because of their proportion. So when we look at the square, we can see the shape itself is quite symmetrical. So we have individuals that we call the green square, green for the undertone of their skin. So compared to the lymphatic, which was a white undertone and the sanguine, which was a red undertone, the green color is caused from bile that's actually uh, within the circulatory system as well. So we're talking predominantly with uh, gallbladder and liver functions. So the body shape itself is quite well proportional for males as well as females. And because they don't have body fat in terms of uh, composition uh, compared to the other two body types I mentioned ago, they have a waist that is well-defined, but they're their weight is more in the lower body. So we talk about the buttocks and the upper thighs being the areas where they may have the accumulation of fat. And for females, they're concerned about cellulite developing in that area. But generally the muscle tone is uh, very visible because of the lack of uh, fat in other areas of their body. We're talking again about a healthy individual. So when we look at them in the flow chart, we talk about bile, again, gallbladder and liver function. So to the right of the chart, you'll see that how uh, the fats themselves are easily distributed and they would benefit from leaner foods, less fat, primarily because of the stress cost to the gallbladder and the liver in terms of processing fat. Their digestive system itself is normal, but they generally hold tension in the gut. And uh, this leads to issues with um, the pH that leads to issues with H. pylori within the gut. And they can be more problematic in the absorption of these uh, imbalances into the bloodstream and affecting the way the skin will actually look. If you look to the left of the chart, you'll see that how the nervous system is quite active. So there's a lot of stress to brain function here. They tend to be multitaskers. And uh, this, this creates issues with regards to overall 
in balance to the gut as well as their hormonal system. When they are out of balance, they tend to complain of colder hands, cold feet because of their weak peripheral circulation. So keep in mind that how compared to the sanguine that we talked about a moment ago, where the circulation is very active. In this case here, you have somebody that may have normal circulation, but the core of the body, the heart, the lungs, the digestive system needs more energy. So if they're not really supporting their system really well, specifically nervous energy, what can happen is that how the warmth needed for the vital organs it is there, but their peripheral circulation or the weakness towards their extremities become actually implicated in becoming uh, not so stable. So cold hands, cold feet is how we generally describe uh, this body type and the digestive system being a little bit weaker. And compared to the nervous body type, the four uh, body types, the last of the four, here you see them being a yellow rectangle. The nervous system is the dominant uh, structure or system in this particular morphology. So we look at their body shape being long and lean, but they can be disproportional uh, compared to the bilious body type I mentioned a moment ago. So the arms and the legs can be a little bit more gangly and the torso itself is more straight with a waist itself that is about the same width as the shoulders and the hips itself. So compared to the sanguine, which has more of a V-shaped uh, physiology in the middle part of the body, this one here is much more rectangular or straight. Uh, because their nervous system is uh, usually the weakness, what we're, looking, what we're looking at is how the nervous system itself impairs or has an impact on everything else. So going down from the nervous system in the flow chart and the general consequences, to the right, we talk about circulation and how this can affect the entire system. So we have uh, an issue to do with oxyhemoglobin actually being a dominant component with the, within their body. And the yellow being from being cold, which is this weakness in peripheral circulation. So if you look to the left of the chart, you're gonna see the, the sanguineous nature of the body, meaning blood flow to the body itself and all the tissues are slowed down or impaired. This creating an issue to do with being cold. This is why the undertone of their skin is more of a pale yellow color. So again, in comparison to the bilious, which is where bile itself gives you this brackish color. Here, we're talking about how just being cold or feeling cold uh, you're not getting any hemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin to the skin level or not as much. And as a result of it, the skin becomes this yellow undertone. If the blood itself is impaired, then you're also going to have an issue with collagen formation. So what tends to happen is their overall skin and muscle tends to be loose or slack and soft because there is no uh, collagen formation uh, occurring or less so occurring. So compared to the sanguineous morphology, they're soft, uh, but they're not mushy compared to the lymphatic morphology, which tends to hold and retain more fluids. Great body type for, uh, in terms of abstract thought process. So when we get into all four morphologies and you read the book, you're going to learn a little bit more about the psychological and behavioral tendencies of these body types. And it gives you an opportunity to really understand your clients well and how to target them so you can maximize uh, their potential and help to guide them. But what Physiodermy is famous for is a unique uh, technology called the MIMA technology. And MIMA is the micro encapsulation of ingredients that are multi-active. So when we talk about products that are available in the marketplace, most skincare lines or products on the market are manufactured in a way where the scientists are developing formulations specifically to target a uh, condition of the skin. And since these topicals are really going to be conditioning the surface of the skin, which we call the corneal layer or the epidermal, the epidermal outer barrier. When we talk about what's available on the market, most of it actually can't get into the skin because the molecular structure is not small enough to actually get into the skin. And then you also deal with issues with reactions because if you mix too many things together, 
you may have issues with reactions triggering dermatitis or some kind of reaction where there's hives or issues with using a specific product. When the MEMA technology is actually utilized, what you have are carrier agents, which we uh, show here in terms of the schematics with molecules, one within the other within the other. So the micro encapsulation is allowing for active ingredients to be placed within the molecules. And because of the sheer size of the molecule, it's able, able to penetrate from the outermost layer of the skin into the skin itself because of the size being able to reach the lower depths of the skin. So when we look at the uh, molecule itself, the epidermis versus the dermis, the dermis is where all of the structures we want to target. Uh, we want to reach that layer so that we can actually change the skin. So what's unique about physidermy is that it has conditioning components for the outer epidermal layer, the corneum layer, but it also has treatments to reach the dermal layer so that we can actually change whatever structures we need to change or reach whatever we need to reach so we can create uh, change. So in the uh, most active components, which we call bioromes, so this is broken down, bio for biochemistry, aroma for smell. These are highly concentrated active ingredients, which are derived from essential oils and plant extracts. So physidermy itself is a plant-based line, no animal ingredients, no animal testing. And the biromes, which would be called serums in North America, are the most active components to reach the depth of the skin. So the technology allows for these uh, spheres the liposomes or sphingolipids, whichever words you want to use, but primarily the MEMA molecule is uh, present here in the biromes and also in some of the moisturizers, but this is how we actually change the skin. The, the way to relate biromes to a moisturizers is that how a moisturizer or a treatment cream will work on the outer surface of the skin with the potential to change the skin itself. But when you add a birome, to a moisturizer or a treatment cream, you enhance the formula, but you actually make that cream more active. So it can be used by itself or it can be used uh, in com combination with other physiognomy products. And as a result of it, we can really make a difference to the client's skin. Also, when we talk about uh, our moisturizers, we talk about the uniqueness of the formulations now combining this three E3C concept. So it's based on the microbiome of the skin and how we want to condition the skin so it actually is in better balance. Ultimately, all human beings have a microbiome where there's good and bad flora and fauna. And it's really about uh, having probiotics on the skin and prebiotics on the skin so you can help to condition the skin. And ultimately to affect the skin is to affect the cells. And if we're using the right solutions, we can make a big difference with reversing some of the damage caused by genetic predispositions as well as environmental factors. So the PCBN3, BNG complex, which is the phosphocholine beta-glucan uh, component. Here you have a little breakdown for you, but what you are looking at is a prebiotic action. Uh, so to give the microbiome the right components so that how the dominant bacteria, the good bacteria, which we call saprocytes, are also going to be working to create a stable uh, skin function. Also with the BG complex, we are working with the defense mechanisms, the Lagerhan cells, which are responsible for immune system, are going to be uh, reinforced. So this allows your skin itself to be uh, functioning to its optimal level. As a result of it, we are working to rebalance normal skin, uh, oily skin, dry skin, sensitive skin, skin conditions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the main thing here with the PC, B, and G complex is that it rebalances, it protects, and it revitalizes the cell function itself. So all physiognomy creams have this, and specifically when we talk about how the absorption of the actives into the cell will make a difference, it's all about building strength. So you wanna promote the collagen and elastin synthesis, and this is specific to the fibroblast cells, which we have present in the dermis and our bone structure. We're not 
uh, affecting the bone, but we are affecting the skin so it becomes stronger and more stable. So as I mentioned a moment ago, the specific techniques we have available is uh, one called morpholymphatic drainage. We do have a video available for this. For those of you that are interested in learning a, a little bit more about it, and once the uh, current situation with the pandemic is over, then of course it would be great for us to have a class in uh, your location, and we have them in various locations throughout the country uh, so that we can do hands-on as well. Uh, but it, the video itself is uh, quite easy to follow. It's just uh, some people are more tactile and they would like to be able to see and practice with live human beings. But the beauty of the technique for the face is that it only takes eight minutes to do and it's incorporated within your treatment facial. And this will help with any edema. You can use it pre-surgery, post-surgery as well. And if you're using active tools, uh, that may trigger stimulation to the skin. This will help to decompress the interstitial fluid buildup that may occur because of those procedures. So it's an excellent opportunity for you to actually learn something that is more aesthetically related, but you're still having a specific effect on uh, how the skin and the face will actually visually look. The other technique we have available, which is called physiotonifying or the uh, manual face or body lift, uh, this incorporates the understanding of the body type again. So each body type being unique in terms of how they build collagen, how their circulation is being affected, but most importantly, how the muscle tone will actually diminish over time. This will be instrumental for those that don't really want to use a machine or can't afford a machine, but this gives you an opportunity to do something that will help to sculpt and redefine the actual shape of the body. So two great techniques, the MLD, morpholymphatic drainage, and the physiotonifying technique, exclusive to physiodermy, but great techniques you can use without products. So you will have these techniques available for your entire professional career. Whatever you do with physiodermy as with everything that we offer with our clients, we want you to focus on a customized treatment plan. So we encourage you to do a consultation that will be complete for that individual. So you need to talk about their health. You need to talk about their body type, especially if you're getting into holistic or alternative therapies. And the skin evaluation can be implemented visually, obviously with a diopter, but you might want to use something that is a little bit more active. So in your consultation, when you talk about the body type, you refer to their morphology, and if you want to talk about skin evaluations, then we talk about some of the tools that are available for you. Something you can learn, which is uh, pretty straightforward, is the Fitzpatrick scale to differentiate between skin tones and what the potential would be with regards to sun damage and how the skin will burn. But this will also have an impact if you're choosing to use devices like our IPL that is uh, part of our company's division called Platinum. So in the skin evaluation devices that are available to estheticians, the wood lamp, the woods lamp found in this imaging device will give you an opportunity to differentiate uh, skin conditions and skin types. So it's part of the general uh, consultation that you should be doing for all your clients. And then other conditions that may occur like that superficial infection, but also blackheads, oxidized oils, people want to know that whatever they're using will actually change. So if you don't point out where the problem lies, then you can't really give them a recommendation that may be specific to their condition. More sophisticated devices like the Visi Imaging System are available. And I'll just quickly pass through these images, but you want to appreciate that people have multiple issues sometimes, and you want to be able to give them information, but more importantly, you want to evaluate their skin, have great record keeping so you can see how the skin changes over time and this satisfies their uh, concerns, but also gives them an opportunity to know that how whatever treatments they're investing in are actually working. So uh, in the most important part, which is a client's needs and expectations, they want to know that whatever they're purchasing will actually work. So again, the NEMA technology that I talked a little bit about is how we actually get into the skin. So 
when we talk about needs and expectations, we have a great little chart, a little cheat sheet for you so that how you know what is potentially available to treat that skin type or skin condition. And it could be for the face, it could be the body, but the home care regimen should be simplified for novices to physiodermy, not because it's gonna damage their skin, it's just that how it's a little bit easier to actually uh, understand things if you are staging your products in a way so that how they could be assimilated into your home care routine and not be stressed about it. Further to that, we do have a prescription chart that has explanations on the side of each product so that how the client, when they are at home, could actually follow their routine quite simply. Uh, and in these uh, documents, we actually provide a self-carbon copy so that you have one retained for the file. And if you want to enter it into your database, of course you may. But the goal here is to uh, show people how to use their products. And of course, their job is to be consistent. So if they're buying products and they're using it according to the frequency here, you'll see on this chart, it tells you AM, PM, but you could also be advising them, like, what do you want to use in the morning? What do you want to use at night? Meaning a day cream, a night cream, et cetera, et cetera. So when we talk about the products that are available, I'm not going to uh, go over each one in great depth, but common sense for estheticians is that how a complete line should have a range. So yes, this cleansing milk is excellent for removing makeup and dirt, but it's also a cleanser for people that have dry skin since they're not producing any sebum. So this will leave a conditioning uh, component to the skin so that how you're not stressing the actual uh, skin with regards to the lack of sebum. So it doesn't create any issues with blackheads or a buildup. So if you're using it for makeup removal, you should be putting on to the skin uh, the dry milk, meaning you don't use any water with it and you remove it with a cotton pad. So this way you're not actually stressing the skin. For people that are using water with it, uh, you're using it not to remove makeup in that particular application. You're using it as a general cleanser. So in that particular case, uh, you know, those individuals will have uh, not, no residue. If you go to our shower milks, which there are two different shower milks available, the S and the L that is written here are actually the two body types, the sanguinous and the lymphatic morphologies. And the reason this is actually written as such is that how we know that those two body types are generally more on the sensitive side. So when we talk about morphologies and the uh, body type sanguinous lymphatic, we automatically steer them towards products that will be helping to soothe their skin and calm it down. But this has a bacteriostatic effect an antifungal effect. So when you utilize the shower milk, a small amount with water, it will help to reduce that buildup that you would normally have and it smells fresh, uh, but it's very concentrated. So a little bit goes a long way and it has to be used with water. So excellent for people that are rosacea prone and generally sensitive. For all other skin types, we have the shower milk NB. So we make an assumption that people that are uh, dominant nervous or bilious morphologies, the N nervous, the B for bilious, they will have more normal to oily skin. And this particular cleanser will help to alleviate some of that buildup that will cause blackheads or impurities building up within the skin. And as another uh, cleanser in your arsenal, it can be used for shaving and any part of the body. So for our male clients, the actual lather will be your shaving agent. Uh, very gentle, again, very concentrated, not um, the same scent as the SL cleanser, uh, a much more uh, pine or neutral scent, uh, primarily because people that have issues with oils don't generally like things that are floral. So you're going to have a floral scent in the pink, and this is more of a pine or a a neutral scent in the NB cleanser. Both of those cleansers, by the way, should last about six months if you're using it uh, twice a day, a small amount as recommended. The stabilizing lotion is the only toner, so to speak, so to say, in physiodermy. This is a very uh, nice, easy formulation, could be used for multiple reasons, most importantly to rebalance the pH of the skin. So when you're actually using 
uh, the stabilizing lotion. And just a little bit of note here, the actual image here, which says shower milk NB, this is actually from the cleanser from the last one. So forgive me for the little bit of uh, faux pas here. It should say stabilizing lotion on the actual container, but nonetheless, the stabilizing lotion comes in a container that looks exactly like this and it'll say stabilizing lotion on it. So the word lotion here in Europe, it means uh, water here in the US. Sometimes it's actually uh, a lotion means a cream. It is a liquid water and your active ingredients will be uh, the ALMM MPR complex and the oak root uh, is actually bacteriostatic as well as an anti-inflammatory. You'll also note that in the stabilizing lotion, there's a bit of citric acid and lactic acid. So this is going to rebalance the pH of the skin, but when it's used with a cotton pad, it'll actually help to slough off buildup. So it may come off a little bit gray or muddy. And that is really because you're technically doing a liquid exfoliant if you're using it with a cotton pad. So great for people that are in a rush, but also uh, great for just uh, the pH function of rebalancing. In professional use, when we come in to train you or use our, use our technical books, there is a method of using the stabilizing lotion where we can create uh, a situation where we don't have to use steam. And this is ideal for those individuals that are very sensitive, uh, but also that don't necessarily like steam. So the compress solution is a unique methodology in physiodermy, but it's utilizing the stabilized motion in a very specific application. Further to that, there is only uh, one exfoliant in the line. So the soft face biopeeling, uh, which is also known in the uh, US as a gommage, this is an exfoliant that has multiple properties. It's working to reduce the buildup of dead cells, as most exfoliants will. There is a bit of granule in the formula. So for individuals that are using it and they feel the granule, if it's irritating to them, you don't rub the exfoliant in. You simply apply it onto the skin, allow it to activate, which takes about three to five minutes and very gently slough off the dead cells with uh, clean hands. So what will come off, depending on what is actually built up within the skin, can look gray or muddy. The more uh, darker the uh, lift or the impurities that are coming off, that indicates your frequency for use. So if you're using the soft face biopeel over the whole face, including around the eye area, you can go on the upper lid as well on the lower lid, uh, just let it activate. So again, three to five minutes and just take your fingers and slough it off. Uh, my suggestion is always to go from the, sensor, the center to the side so that you're actually manipulating the lymphatic system itself to help with better drainage. And uh, the skin, when you're actually completely done, should be soft and smooth. One would follow with stabilizing motion on a cotton pad just to get rid of any debris, but that's also going to make sure that your pH is also in balance. If you wish to use a, a brush, you can use it with a cleanser. This is great for those thicker skins to encourage oxyhemoglobin coming to the surface, triggering collagen formation. And the tool itself should be uh, used with hot water first to soften the bris bristles and then using that softened bristle with your cleansers uh, to remove buildup. In the active solutions that are available, it's a question of differentiating which clients want uh, results based on whatever their specific needs are. Some of the formulations are not necessarily used all through the year. This is a good example. Hydrotonifying, it is for all skin types, but excellent for those seasons where your skin is being dehydrated. So when you are using this formula, it used to come in a dropper bottle and now it comes in a little spray bottle. So you missed your face before you actually put on your next formulations, whether it be a biorome or a moisturizer or the combination of the two. So what you're dealing with here is actually the liquid form of hyaluronic acid. And this will actually help to uh, enhance the, um, the, the, the volume of the face. So it's not a filler in the sense of using something like uh, injectable hyaluronic acids. Uh, this is more to enhance the overall uh, shape of the face. 
So if your skin is loose or dehydrated or sagging and, or dry, uh, this can be used. It's, there is no oil in the formula, but it has oil in terms of heavy weight. Uh, but when you actually use the formula, it'll really help to penetrate into the skin, providing you're exfoliating frequently. If your skin is thick and heavy, this is just gonna sit on the surface of the skin. So we encourage better exfoliation, check your skin types that you're working on, the thicker, heavier skins only benefit from this if the skin is well prepared for the absorption. So hydro, water, tonifying, firming, it feels like water, but it's firming to your skin. And the other formulation that we have that's also used occasionally, meaning seasonally would be or oligo concentrate, oligo, the word for minerals. So here you have the benefits of zinc and magnesium combined with uh, hyaluronic acid as well. So here, when you're dealing with this more gel-like form or heavier formulation, this is not to give oil to the skin. This is to strengthen the epidermis, the corneum layer specifically, so that how the cells uh, have better adhesion. So the people that are sun damaged, the people that are dehydrated, when you look at dehydration, epidermal is when you see fine lines, dermal is when you lack elasticity. So if you lift the skin, and though the skin may feel soft and smooth, if you lift the skin and it separates, that's a recommendation for the hydrotonifying concentrate. If your skin is crepey and you're not holding moisture, so the skin looks uh, dehydrated. This is where the oligo will be more beneficial. It can be used by itself. It can be mixed to a cream, but again, usually in the winter, this is an ideal solution and this can be used with all skin types. So when you have individuals that are oily, but are dehydrated, meaning they're not holding moisture, this is the ideal solution to help them in terms of a hydration without giving them something greasy creating another film on their skin that they don't generally like. So great for individuals where they're having issues with their epidermis because it's not stable. The revitalizing oil, the combination of vitamin A, C, and E, here you have an active solution that can be added to a cream to enhance the formulation since there's varying degrees of dryness and especially seasonally. So in the winter, this is a, an excellent add-on to formulas especially for people that like their cream, but they're feeling stressed because of the shift in the weather. So when we're talking about sensitive skin as an example, where we have a, a choice with moisturizer to condition their skin, if you're adding one to three drops of this formula to their cream, you're enhancing the formula to make it a bit richer. But the formula is also excellent by itself for healing. So when we use it for its regenerating effects and it's applied directly into the skin, this application would be great post procedures if you're dealing like waxing as an example where the skin is a little bit more sensitive and reactive. So this will help to soothe the skin down. If it's after a cut or a burn, it will accelerate the healing of the skin. So we do recommend uh, that you utilize the formula as needed based on the situation that would occur. And unfortunately, again here, a little bit of the imaging issue with the actual bottle. It says oligo concentrate on it, but it will say multi revitalizing oil on the formula. So in the biomes of which we have nine available and very briefly, I will go through uh, the biomes, the soothing biomes, the C and the N are anagrams uh, that are used in French. So C means common N means normalisant. So this is to soothe the skin down, specifically affecting the nervous system. The TM biome for uh, strengthening the skin itself or tonifying muscles, if we're talking about the body, this is an active uh, set of ingredients to help to tone and strengthen the skin. And the soothing uh, or the prior one, which is CN and the TM should never be combined together because they're antagonists. So they cancel each other out. So when, if we're using the Byron TM specifically for treatment, we're talking about strengthening the skin. So we would use or add it to treatment formulas, creams that would be specific for the condition as well. So if we're using a firming cream as an example, then the Byron will enhance that formula. So the moisturizer works on the outside 
and the biorom works more on the inside to strengthen the deeper layers of the skin. If we talk about the biorom FL, which means flutillon in French, basically it's for arterial blood flow. This will help to strengthen the red capillaries that we see. This is excellent post-procedure, especially for those that are doing treatments for uh, stage two rosacea, where we see the microcapillaries that we call cuparos or telangiectasias. Uh, and it's used locally. Again, one to three drops is more than enough for a local area. And if you're using it generally in a cream, you would use up to five drops with the formula. The Biorome HY uh, is for the venous circulation. So this is for people that have dark circles or where the venous circulation is compromised. So if we are recommending this formula, uh, it can be used at the same time with the FL Biorome. Uh, generally, if they're buying one only, uh, you rotate them uh, every three months because that's how they, how long the biromes would last if they're using it as a treatment vehicle. So if they're on the anti-redness, which would be the FL biorome versus the HY, which would also be called the normalizing, you start them with the one that's most important for them at that point in time. And as their skin starts to evolve, you may switch them uh, accordingly so that how they can benefit both circulatory pathways. The red blood vessels, which are the arteries or arterioles and the blue, vessels, blue blood vessels, which are the veins or the venules, they work together. So you want to make sure that both are in balance. And of course the lymphatic circulation is also potentially compromised and we have a biorome specifically for that, which is the biorome VD, also known as the vasodilator. So three circulatory pathways addressed with the biromes. And then when we talk about uh, skin function, we talk about uh, what is actually affected by our environment or genetic predispositions. So the depurion, which is uh, specifically for blackheads, also known as purifying in English, the DEP biorome will help to break down uh, the oils that are building up within the follicle. And this means that how they don't have to pick their face. So it's an excellent solution for individuals that have issues with buildup. So normal combination skin as an example, but then we have individuals that will have buildup underneath the skin where it's not necessarily within the follicle. So these are called whiteheads or amelia, uh, and sometimes they're papules or even cystic acne. So when we talk about the uh, DS biorome, uh, detoxifying solvent, it's actually a blend of plant extracts. Again, the microencapsulation makes a big difference here because we're talking about the delivery of actives into the dermis and you wanna break down that uh, structure because when you are irritating the skin, this is what leads to larger pores or uh, scars and of course, repeated infections. So use locally or generally, depending on the problem that the individual may have. But if their skin is perfectly normal, they don't like the shine, it's the oil glands that are active, the, the follicles are uh, enlarged. The regulating of the oil gland, RS, regulates the sebaceous activity, will be beneficial so that you have a constriction or a tightening of the pores. So it can be used locally for a lot of individuals since we see larger pores in the central axis or the middle part of the face. And of course it may be combined with any biorome or any treatment cream, depending on what the uh, client would uh, like to have happen for their specific needs. And for those that are interested in anti-aging, the revitalizing biorome known as RC uh, is where you have stimulation to a specific structure of the skin, which is the basal germative layer. So when we talk about uh, cellular turnover, as one gets older, the cell turnover is diminished, primarily because of the aging of the skin cycle or, or the uh, metabolism, mitosis of the cell. So this will actually help to trigger cellular turnover. So excellent for individuals that want to see change with regards to wrinkles, fine lines, and of course, with the appropriate moisturizer as well. Great around the eyes, for people that actually don't like heaviness around the eyes but are concerned about those little fine lines. And when we talk about the uh, last biorome, which would be the CEL biorome or 
uh, cellulite biorome. This is specifically for breaking down fats. And this is used in conjunction with another formula that's called the body sculpting gel. And this would be to redefine the actual tone and uh, shape of the physique. So in the treatment creams, when we talk about the treatment creams, we are going to talk about skin type and skin conditions. And uh, we will revisit this particular presentation. I'm just gonna go over uh, them very quickly, just so you have an idea as to what's available. But there are eight treatment creams in the line, each identifying a skin type or skin condition. So when we talk about purifying, the word implies that you're going to help to eliminate here blackheads, but it's combination skin that we're talking about, which generally has a buildup more in the T zone or central axis of the face. If we talk about oily skin, we're talking about it generally or locally, it could be the neck and the chest as well as the back sometimes, but this helps to uh, regulate sebaceous activity and we're dealing with something that's very light. Uh, so you're not having this heavy weight on the face and primarily you can be using the purifying as an example in the winter, if you're targeting your skin types and how they change seasonally and the oily skin would be more in the summer because the heat and humidity may make a difference to their skin's function. If we're talking about dry skin, we mean that they're not producing any sebum. So you make sure you're doing your evaluations properly using your diopters. There should be no sebaceous activity when you look at skin that's not being cleansed. Uh, so the dry skin will help to nourish the skin. Most importantly, it's giving the skin something it's missing, which is actually uh, a lipid value that helps to shift the actual acid mantle with regard to how it's stable. So this is great for people that have issues with dry skin, but also burns and uh, thickness due to being very uh, dry. Vivifying is for the dull sun damaged skin. So it increases cellular turnover, the French word vivifiant, meaning to bring alive. So it enhances uh, oxyhemoglobin coming to the surface of the skin. So when you are using the dry skin formula and the vivifying formula, it's very important to actually take the time to allow your body heat to loosen the molecular structure so it spreads evenly. Most people tend to use these formulas because they're rich, they use too much of it and then they feel greasy or heavy. But if it's used properly, again, it's just a little bit of training your clients, but when you do use it, it is a wonderful formula, leaving the skin soft and velvety and excellent for those individuals that tend to abuse or have abused the sun. Hydro control, as the word says, hydro water control. So this is for dehydrated skin. And this is great for all skin types. I also call it uh, a great treatment cream around the eye area if you don't like the way uh, lighter formulas feel without giving you a heavy, greasy uh, component. So hyaluronic acid is utilized in this formula, but when we are using it generally as a formula, this is safe for all skin types and especially for people that tend to be concerned about uh, smells or fragrances, hydro control is quite neutral in scent. And the treatment cream for firming the skin, which is called toner emulsion. Again, it's not toner in North America where we use a liquid to rebalance or shift the pH of the skin. This is a moisturizer or a treatment cream to help to stimulate collagen formation. Can be used anywhere, face, neck, chest, on the body, around the bust area, or even under the arms. There's lots of ways to be able to utilize the formula for strengthening the tone of the skin. And its uh, formulation could be used exclusively for that type of treatment. Here we have the formula for sensitive skin to soothe the skin down. Generally uh, excellent for people that are prone to rosacea or sensitivities, thinning epidermis. And within a month of using the sensitive skin cream, you can actually see a difference in the undertone of the skin. Uh, it will diminish the tendency to erythema quite actively, and it has a very light texture. So uh, all skin types, oily combination, dry skin uh, would like uh, the use of, or the benefit of the sensitive skin cream. And the last anti-aging cream that we have in the jars is the Optimum Lift, which is a moisturizer uh, that helps to increase cellular turnover. So we're using 
this treatment formula for people that have uh, or show symptoms of loss of elasticity or fine lines and wrinkles in their face. So when we, uh, when we talk around the eye area, we have the formula called eye contour microgel, and this will help to condition the microcirculatory pathway. So we have a balancing of the microcirculatory system, which helps it diminish dark circles, fine lines, puffiness, and it is a gel. It is not a moisturizer. So when you apply this onto the eye area, you're using it to reinforce the circulatory pathways and your moisturizer can go on top of the gel since that's your conditioning agent. For those individuals that don't like the feel of a moisturizer on their eye area, they can use this by itself because you have humectant properties within the formula to attract moisture to the surface of the skin. And then we have some new formulations uh, in physiodermy. The sublimating cream is a tinted sunscreen with uh, anti-aging properties. So when you are using these formulas, there is a color tint one, color tint two. Uh, the color tint one is more for yellow undertones and color tint two are for red or pink undertones. So that is so that you can actually have a better blend of the formula into the skin. Very light and silky, the blue algae extract that's in the formula will leave the skin feeling very soft and smooth. So the combination of the tint, the anti-aging uh, um, anti components will have an added benefit for those individuals that want to have something that's very easy to use during the day. And you have the benefits of a sunscreen component within the formula, the titanium dioxide. So the combination of uh, actives and uh, Ingredients that will work with intrinsic factors gives you a nice, easy uh, one, two, three for a lot of people. And the only mask we have in physiodermy is called a uh, global mask. The global mask is unique that you can actually use it as a base and add to it uh, any of your formulas. You can add a birome, you can add the hydrotonifying, you can add the oligo, you can add the revitalizing oil. So it's a unique mask in that it targets uh, infection, in, in, the, in that it's antiseptic, it targets anti-aging in that it's firming, and then you have the benefit of something that will work to change or amplify whatever you're trying to treat the skin for. So if you're going to be using the mask for somebody that's more on the sensitive side, then I would encourage you to add something like the revitalizing oil and the biorome, either soothing or which we call CN or the biorome FL, which we also call anti-redness. So by, by having a base and combining other components, you're customizing the mask according to the client's needs. We will revisit physiodermy at a later date to talk about the body products that are available. But for estheticians, this more or less gives you a summary of all the things we have available for the face from cleansers all the way through to this mask. So from step one to your last step, you have solutions that can affect the skin. And again, the key to physiodermy, the method of physiodermy is treating the physiology of the skin by understanding the body type, which we call morphology analysis, by understanding your tools, and in this particular case here, a unique technology called NEMA, the microencapsulation of active ingredients, and then having uh, manual techniques such as the lymphatic drainage and the physiotonifying so you can enhance your services. So for all individuals that are interested a little bit more about uh, physiodermy or training with physiodermy, please visit our website at Derm and Co. And if you need to contact us directly, it's 1-800-263-8888. Have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you again soon.